This is a demonstration of shootout hockey tabletop game. Now, unlike other tabletop hockey games on the market, which typically take an hour or more to play, shootout plays in under 15 minutes or less. So it doesn't have quite the complexity of other games, but there's still enough uh, variables and interesting things that can happen over the course of a game which make it a uh, fun and worthwhile game to check out. So here we have all the components of the game. Um, a team card, so there's no individual player cards. All the information to play one team is found on an individual team card. The, the action in the game is driven by either dice or an, a fast action deck, which I prefer. And there are various charts. Now, by using the fa fast action deck, you eliminate the need to consult some of these charts because all that information is found on the deck. So, for the purposes of this demonstration, I will be, de be um, demonstrating the fast action deck version. Now, on times where it would call for a one dice or a two dice reading, this number right up here on the action deck is the equivalent of the uh, dice reading. So if you need a, a reading from a single dice, you just consult the first number. If you need a two dice reading of two to twelve, you just add the numbers together, seven. And that gives you the two dice number. So this is really all you need to play the game right here, just two team cards and an action deck. And looking at the uh, team cards, these are from the great, team, uh, great teams of the past set. 1955 Red Wings, 1967 Blackhawks. And there's a lot of different uh, card sets available for the game. Uh, modern seasons, retro seasons, and special sets like this with with uh, great teams from the 1920s all the way up to the uh, to the 90s. And just to show you some of the things on the team card, you'll see the the players are arranged according to their line, forward line, and then defensive pairs, and then the goalies on the bottom. <clears throat> now the players have a, uh, a letter, sometimes two or even three letters, which represents their scoring rating. Okay, and you'll be consulting the, the letter to find out which player has the, uh, the shot on goal scoring chance. Players are also rated for assists and penalties. And some of the players have a number next to their letter penalty rating. That indicates a fight rating. Not every player is rated for fights. You'll see there's a couple players on Detroit, and let's see, um, a few players on Chicago as well. Now the goalies on the bottom here, they have a defense rating, which indicates their total defense rating uh, for the entire team when they're in the game. A rebound rating, which is a 1-6 to six number and a great save rating, which is a, a two dice number, two to twelve. Before the game you could um, roll the two dice or, or consult the two dice number to get the starting goalie, or for the purposes of this demonstration we'll just use the um, the first string goalie for each team, Terry Sawchuk, Dennis DeJordy for Chicago. Now typically I have a um, a score sheet with the numbers 1 to 20 on it, which I tick off during the course of a game to keep track of the time and know when uh, I've finished a period. So the only preparation that you need to do before the game is to determine each team's scoring range for this game. Now the scoring range is variable from game to game. It'll depend on if the team is home or on the road and depends which goalie is in net. So Detroit is going to be the road team for this game 
Now this scoring range is a is a split rating. If the we're going to consult a uh, a one die six number, if the number is from one to three, they're going to be rated D. From four to six, they're going to be rated E for this game. And we're going to cross reference that with Chicago's goalie, Dennis DeJordy, with with his defense rating. Again, it's a one die six number. From one to four, he'll be rated C for the game. Five to six, he'll be rated D. So we go to the action deck and we consult that the dice number in the upper left corner. So the first number is four and the second is four. So we use the first number for Detroit's scoring rating. It's not one to three, it's a four, so Detroit is rated E for this game. And then the second dice number was a four. And we'll use that to get Chicago's defense rating behind Dennis DeJordy. And it the four falls in between the C range. So <clears throat> we have E for Detroit, C for Chicago. And we go over to the scoring chance table here. And we look under the away team, because we're determining Detroit's scoring range. And Detroit's offense was E. And Chicago's goaltending rating was C. So cross-reference them, and we get 1 to 14. Okay, so that's going to be Detroit's scoring range, and I'll show you where that comes in on the action card. For now, we're going to do Chicago's scoring range, and we pick another action card, and the dice numbers are 1 and 3. So figuring Chicago's offense first, they're the home team. 1, they get the better uh, rating. Uh, 1 is a B, and 2 to 6 would be a C, so since it was a 1, Chicago is going to be rated B for this game on offense. And we cross-reference that with Terry Sawchuk. And the other dice re uh, number was a 3. So that falls in the C range for Terry Sawchuk. So B for Chicago, C for Detroit. And we go over to the scoring chance table again, and this time we look on the home team. So we look under B for the offense, and C for the goalie rating gives us an 82 to 100 scoring range. Now, where the scoring ranges come into play, Detroit 1 to 14, Chicago 80 to 100, 82 to 100. On each action card, there is a random number 1 to 100. If the random number falls within Detroit's range of 1 to 14, they get a scoring range on that play sequence. If it falls between 82 and 100, Chicago gets a scoring chance on that play sequence. Now there's three different things that can happen on any given play sequence. The random number can fall within either team's scoring range and they have a scoring chance. The random number can fall within a penalty range in which case they'd be a possible penalty chance against either team or the random number could fall into neither team's range in which case it's just a few minutes of play in which nothing really um, spectacular or interesting happens maybe you know a little bit of neutral zone play a couple of routine shots on goal routine saves by the goalie and those are the three uh, things that will happen on any given draw from the from the action deck. Now we'll go over some of the items on the action deck here. We already explained the uh, the two dice number. The first thing we're always going to be consulting is the time. And this number right here will tell you how many minutes are going to elapse on this play. It's usually zero, one, two, three, or four. That's the random number. Over here is when a team has a scoring chance, this tells you which player on the roster. You're going to consult the letter and look up the player with that letter rating on the roster. And that player will have a scoring chance. When there's a possible penalty, there's two types of penalties. A, which will be a minor penalty. B, which will be a major fighting or a double minor penalty and you have letter ratings again that will correspond to 
the player's um, penalty rating. Now once a player is designated as the shooter in a scoring chance situation, the next step is to flip another action card and determine where he's taking the shot from. It's either going to be from the blue line, face-off circle, or the slot. So you're going to look right here where it says where, and you also look under even strength, or if you're on the power play, or shorthanded. And that tells you where the player is taking the shot from. You then draw another action card, and you match up, like let's say the, the shot was from the, from the slot. You match up slot with even strength, and it tells you the result of the shot. Either be a goal, no goal, or it could be a great save chance for the goalie, in which case you'll consult the goalie's great save range. You'll draw another action card, and you'll go right here where it says save, and that'll be a 2 to 12 number. And if it falls within the goalie's range, he makes a great save. The other possible reading would be a rebound in which case you're going to consult the goalie's rebound rating which is going to be a 1 to 6 number which is also found on the action deck right here rebound and that'll give you a in DeJordy's case 1 to 4 he would have ma made a save on the rebound 5 to 6 the shooter would have scored now some other things on the action deck um, here are the the designation for assist, first assist, second assist, and there's also a, um, a section for if you pull the goalie at the end of the game for a sixth attacker, this gives you the result, could be an empty net goal or it could be a uh, goal for the, uh, uh, for the team with the extra skater. And there's also a rare play chart which is incorporated into the action deck. A rare play reading will usually uh, come into play under this section right here. And also up, up here we have two other sections which I usually don't use but this is if you want to keep individual shots on goal for players this tell you, tells you which players on that particular play sequence will receive the shot on goal and if you want to keep the time of goal or penalty this gives you the seconds that correspond with whatever minute the penalty or um, goal occurred in. Okay, so we're, we're ready to begin play now, and this is all you need to, to play the game, just two team cards and the action deck, if you're not using the, uh, the dice version. So we start off by flipping the first action, action card, and we look at the time first. So on this sequence, two minutes of time are going to elapse. Flip another action card, and we look at the random number, 12. Now, remember Detroit's scoring range was 1 to 14, so that f falls within Detroit's range. Right off the bat, they've got a scoring chance. And now we flip another action card to determine who's going to be the shooter. It's going to be the player rated B. So we look on Detroit's roster, and the first line center, Rybel, I believe the first name is Dutch, Dutch Rybel, and um, we'll, we'll call him that for now. Um, is rated B, so he's going to get a scoring chance. Next step is to see where the shot is coming from. Now he's at even strength, so he's taking a shot from the face-off circle. Another action card, and we get the result of the shot. Look under face-off circle, even strength, a goal. So right in the first two minutes of play, Detroit has a goal. Now the next step would be to determine the assists and we'll skip that for now we might do a, a separate video on uh, on how to how to uh, assign assists but for now Detroit's got an early one nothing lead so we flip another action card and we check the minutes elapsed now in this case uh, no time elapses on this play so it's sort of like uh, right after the goal scored something happened immediately after and it's still within the same minute so we're still in the second minute of play and now we check the random number and it's 44 so it doesn't fall into either team's scoring range but it is showing that there's a possible penalty situation against the away team a penalty A which is going to be a minor penalty 
So we flip another action card and we see which players on the Detroit roster will potentially have a penalty called against them. So we look under penalty A, any player rated V or Z2 is going to be given a two minute minor penalty. So we look down to Detroit's roster, his Alex Delvecchio is rated V, so he's going to get a minor. Bill Deneen is also rated V, and that appears to be the only players. There's nobody rated Z2 uh, on, on the um, penalty ratings. So Detroit has been assigned two minor penalties, but you only play out one actual power play. The other one is considered to have occurred elsewhere in the period and was successfully killed off. Now, if that's a little confusing, I will do a separate video explaining the uh, the penalty situation. But for the time being, we're only going to play out one two-minute power play. So Chicago is going to be uh, on the power play with the man advantage. On a power play, you flip two action cards. Each action card consists of one minute of play. We're not going to um, pay attention to the to the time designation on a power play. Now, on a power play, the team, the power play team's scoring range is increased by 15. So if Chicago was at 82 to 100, for this two-minute power play, their scoring range will be 67 to 100. It's increased by 15, 15 numbers. So to start the power play, this is going to be the third minute of play in the first period. We flip the first card. The first card counts for one minute and we look at the random number. Now 99, that's in Chicago's scoring range. So they've got a, a pretty good chance now. They've got a power play scoring chance. So flip another card and, and get the shooter. The player rated E. So we look down at Chicago's roster and it's first line, Doug Moans. Left winger is rated E. So he's got the shot on the power play. Now we see where he takes the shot from. Look under where, power play, from the face-off circle. And then the next action card is going to tell us the result of the shot. Power play, face-off circle, it's a save chance for the Detroit goalie. So we go down to Terry Sawchuk and we consult his save, his great save range rating, which is 7 to 11. Now you could either roll the two dice, but since I'm using the um, the action deck will just go right to the great save number. Flip a card. Now remember, 7 to 11, he makes the save, and it's an 8. So Sawchuck has stopped Moans on a uh, good shot from the face-off circle on the power play. And that all occurred on the first minute of the power play, and now we're going to pick an action card for the second minute. And the random, now remember, we don't pay attention to the timer. Uh, on a power play, each action card is just one minute of play. So the random number, two, actually falls into Detroit's range. They're the shorthanded team, and their range is 1 to 14. So Detroit is going to get a shorthanded scoring chance. Again, we go back to the action deck and find out which player, and it's player B. And it's Dutch rival again. Another scoring chance, this time he's on the uh, the penalty killing unit. And we flip a card to find out where it's coming from. Shorthanded blue line. Shorthanded um, scoring chances are always from the blue line. That's why these two boxes are X'd out because a face off circle or a slot, that, that, that will never um, come into play. So we know it's from the blue line. Now we flip an action card for the result blue line, shorthanded, no goal. So Dennis DeJordi made the stop on Dutch Rival and that will finish the two minute power play. So four minutes of time have elapsed. Now we go back to even strength and we consult the the time rating. Okay, another two minutes are going to elapse on this play so we're into the sixth minute of play. Check the random number. 62 does not fall into either team's scoring range. Remember, Detroit was 1 to 14, Chicago was 80 to 100. So it was just two minutes of nothing much happening, you know, perhaps some neutral zone play, a couple of 
easy saves for the goalie and we pick another action card for the next sequence another two minutes elapse and we're into the eighth minute of play and we've got another uh, penalty chance here again it's going to be on Detroit a chance for a penalty a minor uh, minor penalty on Detroit so we flip again to see who the players are penalty a any player rated W or Z2 is going to get a minor penalty so we're looking down Detroit's roster Remember they had Z2 last time. There was nobody rated Z2. And, uh, okay, Marcel Pronovo is rated W. And he seems to be the only player. So there's just one penalty called on that play. And it's going to be another power play for Chicago. And remember, each action card is one minute on the clock. So, and again, Chicago's scoring range increases from 82 to 100 to 67 to 100. So here's the first draw. We go right to the random number, 71, that falls within Chicago's adjusted power play range now. So they've got a power play chance. Flip a card to find out which player. Player A. And that's going to be Bobby Hull on the second line. Back to here. Power play, it's right from the slot. So we got Bobby Hull taking a shot from the slot and pick another one to get the result. From the slot, power play, goal for Bobby Hull. So again, we'll, for now we'll skip the assists, but Chicago has tied the game on a power play goal. And that happened during the first power play minute, so that happened during the, the ninth minute. And if you want to get the exact scoring, you could call it 9.56. Okay, so we're back to even strength play. Three minutes elapse on this play sequence, so we're into the 12th minute. And 97, that's in Chicago's scoring range, they've got another scoring chance. This time it's player with a rating of O. And that's going to be Phil Esposito on the second line. So Esposito's got a shot. Find out where he takes it from where even strength face-off circle and now another action card for the result you look under even face-off circle that's a goal for Phil Esposito so Chicago has taken the lead and again we'll we'll skip the assists for now so I believe we we were up to 12 minutes of play and back to even strength one minute elapses so we're into the 13th minute of play 64 is the random number, does not fall into either team's range, so nothing happens on that play sequence. Another two minutes of play elapse, so we're into the 15th minute of play. And the random number is 87, again that's in Chicago's range, remember they're 82 to 100. So Chicago is really putting the pressure on Terry Sawchuk here in the first period. So. We see which player has it. Player rated S. Okay, that's going to be the defenseman, Pierre Pillow. Now we see where the shot is from. Even strength from the slot. So he's coming in from the uh, defensive point shot for a uh, attacking the net with a slot or the shot from the slot. And the result, slot, even strength. Again, another great save chance for Terry Sawchuk. We go back to his save rating. Between 7 and 11, he's going to make the save. We draw another card. And we look under the save. And again, it's an 8. So Terry Sawchuk makes another great save to keep the game close. Still 2-1 to one Chicago. I believe we were into the 14th minute. So draw another card. Another 2 minutes elapses. So we're into the 16th minute of play. Random number is a 5, so that's in Detroit's scoring range. Remember, they were 1 to 14. Pick a card to find out the player. The player rated N. So that's going to be a player on the fourth line, Wilson, center. He's rated N, so he's, he's got a scoring chance. Flip an action card. It's coming from the slot. 
even strength and the result even strength from the slot no goal the slot is usually a, a pretty good chance of scoring but the Jordy denied him on that one so it remains two to one Chicago and we're back to flipping for the time one minute elapses we're into the 17th minute of play check the random number uh, remember Chicago was 82 to 100 at even strength so that's outside of either team's range and nothing happens on that play and the time elapses three minutes so that takes us to the end of the period we were at 17 minutes so that takes us to the 20 minute mark and usually when uh, when an action card takes you to uh, to the end of the period you don't um, you don't consult a random number and have a last play. O only in the uh, third period, at the, at, at the end of the game, do you uh, check the action card for a play. So that concludes uh, one minute of play of shootout hockey. Chicago holding a 2-1 to one lead. And in um, future videos, I will show how to determine the assists after a goal and also how to assign the penalties. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.